It is a different and unique church service. If you are uh, first time joining us here at The Journey, we want to welcome you. Uh, there's a chance to check in. Just go to our, 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 uh, let's see, go to our website. You can check in there, I believe. If not, uh, maybe not. I don't know. Just find me. I want to say hello to you personally. I don't know what's going on here today, uh, so just bear with me, all right? Uh, I do want to introduce just a few people, just so those who may not have been here at The Journey before, or maybe it's been a long time, to know who we are. Uh, my name is Eric Free. I'm the teaching pastor here at The Journey. Uh, I've been with The Journey for the last four years. Uh, it's been a, an enjoyable, wonderful time here at The Journey. We're seeing God move in mighty ways. I want to introduce Pastor Brock Winkler. He's back there in the back talking, not paying attention to anything I'm saying, which is about, oh, there he is. He's back there waving. Everybody wave, say hi, Pastor Brock. He's our lead pastor. He's been here for a long, long time. We're so grateful that he's here. Now, if anything goes wrong, I just want to say this was his idea, uh, so you can just blame him. Uh, so he's going to be cooking up, firing up the grills here in a little bit. Uh, we're looking forward to that as well. Uh, let's see, Carrie Claw, she's back there. She's a Journey Kids. Uh, you're gonna, I'm going to introduce her here in a little bit. But if there's Journey Kids are all those uh, fifth grade and younger. Uh, generally, they normally have their own church service, but they're going to have church out here today with us. They're going to join us here in one quick minute. Um, is Diane Young here? Diane and ja Josh, Diane Young, Josh Myers. Uh, they're our Compass Youth Leaders. Uh, so they are grateful. That's sixth grade through high schoolers. They meet most Sundays uh, from 4 to 5 30. Uh, no, no Compass today. Go celebrate. Uh, go shoot off fireworks. No, I'm not saying go shoot off fireworks. Uh, but when it happens and I don't see, I don't know. All right. So we got a lot of that stuff going on. Uh, there are other missionaries and ministries that we support. Uh, Kurt Hand, Kurt Hand, where's Kurt Hand? Kurt Hand, he supports the uh, Saints Prison Ministry. Uh, have you guys gone out and been able to go to places in the South Falls? Not in Illinois. Not in Illinois. Right now, they're still trying to go out and try to get into the prisons here in Illinois, but due to the COVID stuff, it's getting a little harder. Pray for those ministries. Uh, pray for that. There's awesome opportunities where, where the gospel is getting entered into uh, the prisons through softball uh, games, and, and they do a pretty good job playing softball, not to, not to say the least. So just continue to lift them up and uh, lift their prayers. Looks like we got water passing on. It's like a baseball game. Just raise your hand if you want some water. Uh, we're coming around here. This is fantastic. Uh, uh, last but not least, uh, my wife is around here somewhere. Uh, but Julie and I are, are going to be taking off or, or participating in the Indianapolis Half Marathon all supporting Team World Vision. Now, if you're interested in supporting a Team World Vision where we can bring clean water, and you're interested in maybe running a half marathon or full marathon, uh, we'd be glad to talk to you about that training, which starts this week. So we want to get you plugged in. It's a great opportunity. Uh, we're handing out water where you don't even have to stand up and, and, and get to it. For those in, in Africa, they've got to walk around four miles one way to get dirty water. Um, and so this is an opportunity where we can bring clean water to them. I also want to make mention, uh, Wes is back here. Hi, Wes. Hi, Wes. He got back from a mission trip uh, there in Africa or Zambia. Zambia here a couple uh, a week or two so ago. He's going to talk more about that here in a little bit. We got a lot of stuff going on here at the Journey. There's still stuff. Uh, we got the Fam Jam coming up this Friday, July 8th. Coming up, that is a, a juggler. He's going to share a testimony and a message on that. That's 7 o'clock here uh, at the church as well. Other stuff going on, check out our Facebook page, our, uh, our website that has all those other information regarding Bible studies and, and the different small groups going on with that. As a reminder, Journey Men, no small group tomorrow night. Nothing tomorrow night. Go, don't blow off your hand in fireworks. Just saying. This is a word of advice. All right, with that, I'm going to ask our Journey Kids to come forward. I want all the kids and even some youth if you're willing to come on up here. They gonna do they're gonna lead us in this next song. You've heard it here. We're gonna go and start playing, but let's uh, as we're coming up, let's open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for how you're working in our church. Uh, we're grateful for who you are. You are a good God Almighty, and you are worthy to be praised. So Father, as we start this worship service out, let us proclaim who you are today. Let us proclaim your name. Testify who your love, your grace, and the fact that you are a good God Almighty. Father, we turn over this worship service to you. Let us not uh, worry about the small stuff. Let's not worry about how long this is. 
Let's just celebrate community with our church family. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to all stand up this morning. Let's stand and worship this morning. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Give him a hand. Thank you for leading us in worship. Everybody else, go ahead. Please be seated. It is my privilege. I've known Wes for many, many years, uh, starting over at the uh, Free Course Southern Baptist Church. He's been a great friend. Uh, he's also got a great heart for God. Over the last several years, he's been able to go and share the gospel uh, over to countries in Africa. This past uh, this past few weeks, he went over to Zambia sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to have him come and share a little bit about his uh, message, his story. Uh, but as he does, when he comes, let me just pray for him as uh, we go, continue in our service this morning. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the testimony of Wes. Thank you for the opportunities that he's been given to share your name, to share the gospel, uh, and all throughout the world. Father, I pray now that you just bless him this morning as he shares this testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This, this reminds me of Zambia. I was always outside. <laughs> always in the sun. And what a blessing. Uh, first of all, I'll start by thanking everyone here. Everyone here supported me, uh, gave donations, gave prayed for me. It's important that I have that support from you guys. Because one year ago, do you know where I was? Yeah, in the <laughs> I was just admitted to the hospital because of blood clots on my leg that went in, into my lung. Uh, I just thought about that a few minutes ago. And at that time, they told me I would never, ever go on a mission trip again. And I could see why. 
I was 339 pounds. Uh, since then, I've lost 120 something pounds. And I can promise you, it wasn't me that did it. It was my Lord and Savior that gave me the guidance. Amen. Because all I've wanted ever since then was to go back to Africa. Because I feel that's my calling as a Christian. Uh, after I retire, if I'm able to go over there and spend a year, I will do it. Because they need it over there. It's, just, it's a wonderful thing. I've lost so much, not just weight, in the last year. Many times I felt like Job. It seems like uh, the hedge of protection was taken away from me. That has happened to me as well. In a lot of ways. But here's what I found out. The hedge of protection wasn't taken down. After everything that happened, it's only been strengthened. No matter what's happened, he's, God's always been there. He's always protected me. It's like the widow in Zarephath. Anybody know that story? She, is, she had already given up. She was out gathering sticks when Elijah came to see her. God told Elijah to go see the widow in Zarephath to, to eat their meal. And in that case, Elijah got there and, she showed, and he showed up. And when he showed up, that lady was gathering sticks. That's all she had, a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. Just enough to make a little bit, little bit of bread. And Elijah told her to go and make that cake and give it to him. Because she had the faith to do that, she was blessed, and that, that flour never ran out. That oil never ran out for a whole season. And in a lot of ways, that's how I felt. Like the widow of Zarephath. I was ready to give up. I was out gathering sticks. I felt like I didn't have very much left. But God was there. I gave everything that I had to Him. And you see where He went. He's still blessing me. He continues to bless me. I just want to thank you guys. And guess what? I have already signed up for next year. So yes, I'm going to be begging you for money. Because you got to remember, I work at Walmart. But this, this last time in Africa, I knew God was with me all the way because as soon as I got on that flight, yes, it's a 16-hour flight. But I felt blessings, I felt led the whole time I was on the plane. And if anybody saw the picture of the uh, sun, sunrise I got, that was just God saying, I've got this. Yeah, just follow this, follow me. And guess what happened? Even though we lost one team, we lost one whole team. So we didn't beat Robin's numbers, and she'll be quick to tell us that. <laughs> but she did have one more team in week. But out of that, 16,060 people heard the gospel. Awesome. Of which 11,625 accepted Christ as their Savior. Yeah. And that's nothing anybody on our U.S. team did. That's nothing anybody on the National Missionaries for Africa did. That was all God had waiting for us. Because that spirit was there as soon as we got there. Everything was easy. Nothing was hard. We go, I got into a village. There'd be 200 people just waiting. Because the Zungu was coming. And the Zungu was coming. And that means the foreigner, the American, was coming. So they'd be just like you guys here. And I'd have my Avanja cube and sheets. And I'd present the gospel to them. And 72% of everybody that was that heard was accepted. Right? So yes, I will be begging. I was begging a lot. If I can go in February, I'll go in February. If I can go in June, I'll go in June. I'll be begging for money. God bless you all. Thank you once again. And, uh, I can't wait to represent you on the mission field again.
to show Christ's love to the church, to the community, and the world, one person at a time. Thank you for supporting us in this, both financially, but also physically, and also prayerfully. So I ask you, as we continue in our worship, I want to ask you now just to consider how you can support uh, the missions of, of, of the Journey Church. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you this morning for this opportunity to continue to praise your name on such a wonderful day. Uh, this weekend, we celebrate freedom. Let us be reminded about the freedom we have in Jesus Christ because of the ultimate love and sacrifice that he gave to us on the cross there uh, so many years ago. So, Father, I pray that this can be our testimony, that we can be a choir proclaiming the testimonies of your love. So, Father, here we are. We surrender ourselves to you. May the gifts we give bring praise, glory, and honor to your name. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. This is revival, and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Won't you choose it? You can't lose it. Oh, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Yeah. 
feature you find that gospel beat that's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need. Clap your hands and stomp your feet as you find that gospel beat that's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Joy. All right. Uh -oh. I know what people said. Yeah. Amen. We'll see how this goes. This has been a very weird day for me. Um, I'm very unorganized, and I do not like it, and I'm, I'm blaming Brock, so he, he's, he's been able to help me out, so he's, he's taught me a lot of things over the last four years, I hope it, I hope it works, I hope I've learned, learned a few things. <laughs> Sir, if you got your Bibles, or if you got your, your, your phones, go ahead and turn with me to, to Matthew chapter 19, that's where we're going to put stuff out there for just a little bit, we're not going to be long, just because I know there's the grills cooking, there's games, everybody's eyeing those, they're ready to start throwing things at me, I mean, uh, at just whatever. Uh, so I, I, there's not going to be a lot of stuff that we want to go for, but we do want to share God's word this morning. It's going to be Matthew chapter 19. While you're turning there, I realize i got to use my right hand to open my Bible and whatnot. But how many people remember that magic eight ball? Anybody remember that magic eight ball? Yeah. Especially at our age, at our age, we would answer all of life's questions with the magic eight ball. Some of us would get married or not married based on that magic eight ball. I would ask the question, does Julie really like me? And the answer would be, hmm, probably not likely. <laughs> so yeah, that's what, uh, I don't know what kind of, you'd ask those questions, you'd ask those questions and, and they say, oh, you know, definitely yes, or, or maybe ask again later. Now for those kids who are asking, well, what about that magic eight ball? You have the exact same thing. It's just called Siri right now. All right. You ask Siri, and it tells you those things. We ask the Magic Eight Ball, and they give you those things. All right. So now the question is: the question we got to ask ourselves. I want to try a little survey this morning, a little survey, to see if we can have the same kind of answers. All right. Same kind of answers. I'm going to ask you if it is a definitely yes. If you're going to answer the survey, definitely yes. I need you to stand up. If it is, my reply is no, just go ahead and stay seated, all right? Can you do that for me? Yeah. We got five easy questions, all right? Five easy questions. Question number one, can you wear socks with sandals? We got some demonstrating already that there's some socks with sandals. Oh, now there's some caveats. There can only be slides, apparently. I don't know. Let's see how it is. All right, go ahead. I'm causing division in the church, Pastor Brock. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. This is a very uh, theological question. Did Noah put woodpeckers on the ark? <laughs> That's interesting. It's because the woodpecker would pack the ark. I don't know. I just, just, just sorry. That was just a weird question. I don't, I don't know. I just a weird question. I'm sorry. This question I, is definitely for Vonda. All right. This question's for Vonda. If a bunch of cats jump on top of each other, do you still call it a dog pile? <laughs> if the real 
real question. I, you just got to ask that. I don't know. This question has been asked many times before in the church, but we still want some clarity. We've added some new members, some new attendees. Do you put cheese on a Whopper? No. Oh, see, oh, see, here we go. Oh. On a Whopper. It's on a Whopper. All right. We're still divided. It is still a divided church back. We... <laughs> Pastor Brock says if you like cheese on your Whopper, you can go home. But today I'm in charge, so you can stay. <laughs> All right. This one is a very serious question. You don't need to stand for this one. But the question is, is there life after death? Yes. Is there life after death? And, and that's a very serious question because a lot of times we live like there is no life after death or we talk like there's no life after death or we're not concerned about somebody else's life after death. The seriousness of that question is really the basis of Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19 is a story about a rich young ruler who asks this question to Jesus. He says, teacher, what good thing must I do to get or to inherit or to obtain eternal life? What thing must I do, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? That is a very powerful question and it's a question that I hopefully we can answer just quickly this morning. As we do that, before we open up to God's word, let's open up in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thank you. Thanking you this morning for who you are. Of how you're moving in our midst. Even in the busyness of days, even when there's distractions, the gentle breeze flowing across our face. We're going to answer the question, how do I receive eternal life? Because in all reality, nothing else matters. The so Father, I pray that you open up our hearts this morning. I open up our hearts to hear your word, to hear your voice. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. 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 All right, Matthew 19 says these words, starting in verse 16. Matthew 19, verse 16 says this word. Someone came up to Jesus and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? As you're reading that, as you're studying that, thinking about that, look at those pronouns, look how that question is asked. And Jesus says to him, Why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Then he said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept, what am I still lacking? And Jesus said to him, if you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come, follow me. We look at that passage, we really understand that a lot of us, we, we, we want eternal life. We want to have everything in order so that when that time comes, we know for certainty without a shadow of doubt that I will spend eternity with heaven. Now the question is asked, what does eternal life, what does eternity look like? How long is eternity? Some of our youth are thinking, boy, 40 is an eternity, right? Boy, that just seems like a long time ago, let alone if somebody is 60, 70, 80 years old. Boy, that seems like an eternity. But all of us who are Little older, little wiser says, boy, it goes by in a flash, does it not? So how long is eternity? The best description I've got of eternity was shared with me by a youth pastor or youth speaker. He says, consider the earth, or consider a size of a, 
a ball, a steel ball the size of Earth. All right, got that picture in your mind? A big metal steel ball the size of Earth. The amount of time it takes for an ant to go around that Earth so many times, around that ball so many times that it diminishes to nothing. That might give us an idea of how long eternity is. I don't know about you, but that's a really long time. The question I have to ask ourselves this morning, are we prepared for that time when God calls us to eternity? We as believers believe that there are two places where we go after we die. We can go into a place called heaven, which is where God resides, or we can go in a place called hell, the place of the prince of darkness resides. All right, the question is, where are we going? How do I know where I can have eternal life? The difference between heaven and hell is life and death. Where heaven is, is eternal life. Where hell is, is eternal death. The question is, where are we spending eternity? The rich young ruler asked, what good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life? We, Brock and I both know that we're not Jesus. Because we wouldn't respond the way Jesus responded. Because what we would respond is, what do you mean, what good thing can you do? Look at our world around us. Look at the things that we have done today. Look at the things we have done this past week. How many good things have we done? Compare that to how many bad things we have done. Do they even come close? But here's the reality about heaven. Here's the reality about God's righteousness. One sin separates us from God's righteousness. One thing can keep me from eternity because of my sin. I become unrighteous for him. You say, well, that's not fair. God is love. God is love. But he's also righteous. And because I am not able to inherit eternal life because of what good things that I have done because of my sin... God in his greatest of loves sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. The good teacher, the, the rich young ruler asked, the teacher asked Jesus, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? There's a policy. There's nothing we can do. Because here's what Jesus responds. He says, follow the commandments. How many people are good at following the commandments? Wow. <laughs> wow. I was looking for a couple more. Here's, here's reality. We, we think we've done good because we think, well, I haven't killed anybody today. Right? We well, haven't killed anybody today, therefore I'm good. And we leave it at that. And here's, here's the reality of it. We rank our sins and we try to admit the sins we don't want anybody to know about. Anybody else born and raised Catholic? I was born and raised Catholic. Anybody else born and raised Catholic? All right. And for those who, weren't, who aren't Catholic, let me ask you, let me just give you a quick invite or information. The way the Catholics go is you have to go and confess your sins to the priest. All right? That's how then you can be uh, repentant of your sins. You get the penance, and then, then maybe if you do enough penance, then you might be getting out of purgatory and all that kind of stuff. And, and maybe have, there's a whole lot of theology we won't go there. But here's the reality of this. When I go and talk to the priest, especially when he's the priest of the Catholic school that I attended, I may have not admitted to the fact that I have cheated on a spelling test a time or two. <laughs> and so many times in our life, we would like to think to ourselves a lot better than we really are. We like to make ourselves look really, really good. That's something called Facebook, right? Instagram. Man, look at those pictures. I'm looking all good. I'm looking. Nobody sees the life beyond those pictures. And so then we think to ourselves, what good thing can I do? That's what we ask Jesus. And Jesus says, well, just keep the commandments. And you start looking at those commandments and say, you know what, I've done that. I'm good. I'm good. But something is still missing. Anybody else figure that out? Anybody else see that? Salvation isn't about being good. It's not how many good things can I do. Do I have good karma or bad karma? has nothing to do with how good you are. Because in all reality, good isn't good enough. Good isn't good enough. We are still lacking something. We're still missing something. Paul tells the church in Ephesus, we are saved by grace, not by works, so that no man 
may boast. It has nothing to do with how good we are. He realized that Jesus knew that, and he also realized that, that Rich Young Ruler may not have been telling the exact truth or may not be willing to do what is required to be saved. Salvation isn't about being good because good isn't good enough. Quite simply, this is it. Salvation is simply Jesus. Salvation is simply Jesus. What Jesus tells the rich young ruler is this. If you really want to be complete, surrender yourself and follow me. Here's a lot of things. Here's the reality about a lot of people today. It'd be much easier for us to follow the check marks, follow the check boxes of Christianity. I say, well, I attended church today. We got that off our check box today, right? Even though it's outside, we got that off our check box. I read my Bible at least once this week. I mean, it might have been during the church service, but at least it was once this week, right? So I, I can do all those check marks. But the question is, are you willing to surrender yourself and follow him? That's the problem with the rich young ruler. He wasn't willing to follow him. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell. Let me say that again. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell. Because we think we can do it just enough. But in reality, we're not willing to surrender ourselves to Christ. If you believe in your heart, Jesus the Lord, and that God raised him from the dead, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. What Paul tells the church in Corinth. This morning, before we start eating, before we start enjoying the, the community of, of the Journey Church, we have to ask ourselves this morning: If you were to die tonight, do you know for certainty where you would spend eternity? If it's all about you, if you're answering those questions, I know I can do that based on all the things that I have done then you're missing. You've missed it. Because Jesus says all you need to do is abandon yourself and follow me. Abandon yourself and follow me. Where that leads us, I cannot answer that. The question you have to ask yourself is are you willing to follow him? Our praise team is going to lead us in the next song of worship. It's going to be a song of invitation. If you've been struggling with that answer, if you don't know for certainty where you will spend eternal life, maybe today is going to be the day where you can be set free. Maybe today is the day in which you can experience eternal life for the very first time. I don't want you to be ashamed to think, you know what, I've been a member of this church for a long, long time, and if I come forward, maybe people are going to say something bad about me. It has nothing to do without anybody else. It has nothing to do with what other people think. It has everything to do with your relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of you may be saying, well, wait a second, God can't love me because of all the things that I've done. I couldn't uphold those Ten Commandments. God says, let those chains be broken and be set free. Lay them down at the foot of the cross and allow Jesus to take over your life. He accepts you exactly who you are and you can be free today. Will you accept him today? Will you allow him to break the free chains off you so you can be set free for the very first time in your life? As you stand this morning, as we sing this song, if you need to come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'll be glad to share with you and how you can do that. Our elders will be glad to share with you. We'll be glad to set you free this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this time of worship to say this, with all the stuff that's going on in this world, the only thing that matters about my life, about my eternity, is simply Jesus. Father, I pray that's what's heard this morning. That we acknowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. 
so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let that be the simple message. Let that be the reminder that it's simply Jesus. Father, thank you for sending us Jesus to break our chains, to set us free. For those who are struggling or battling that eternal thought, is there life after death? Can I know for certainty where I will spend eternity? Father, let that be a freedom today. Let this day be their independence day. Let West Church rejoice in the salvation of the souls, not all the way across the world, but right here in East Peoria, Illinois. Father, let us proclaim your name. Let us sing your songs of praise. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. Been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice and the same old lies, if you're still trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got shame, he's a chain breaker. We both search for the light of day, the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We all run the things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. Freedom for saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got shame, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. When you feel love. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. all of God's people said. Amen. 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 All right. This concludes our worship on the lawn, but this does not conclude our day. All right. So just give you a little heads up of what we got going on. Pastor, Pastor Brock says five minutes. So here's what I want you to do, right? As soon as I get done talking, you're just going to surround him. <laughs> no, no, no. It, five minutes until food's done, but we are in no rush. Uh, we want to enjoy community. One of the things we've been struggling to do over the last two years, and especially since we come together, as two churches over the last year is just finding times of fellowship and community so there is no rush enjoy talking with somebody who you're sitting next to um, go if you haven't met somebody go and talk to somebody else introduce yourself uh, it is just a great opportunity to come together and just enjoy this day uh, we're going to get some games out we're going to have some fun there is no time limit uh, let's just uh, let's do what we can and just uh, enjoy the community and fellowship today with that racing it's all yours I was 
walking the wayside. Love's on a lonely road. I was chasing the highlight, trying to satisfy.